Okay. Really? <laughs> oh, man. Morning. So here's what I wanted to show you guys. Shutting off in less than one minute. I'm gonna go ahead and press the brake and press the start button now. All right. Let me get situated here quick. Hope you guys aren't fogging up on me. So I'll show you the exterior temperature in just a minute. Uh, my house was saying minus 22. Currently the vehicle is claiming minus 17. Uh, inside, if you can see that, 30 degrees on this one. 32 on this one. We are parked right now in a pole building, a metal pole building. It's not insulated. It got down to almost 30 below last night. Uh, it was like 27, minus 27 Fahrenheit. It's cold. Again, this is our third and final test of the experiences that you might face if you're buying an EV and it's cold. What we simulated here was vehicle has been parked outside for actually over 24 hours in the frigid temps. The only difference is it's been plugged in. It's been plugged in the entire time. What I did was I um, let the, I started the vehicle. I just used the remote start. I didn't use the schedule or anything like that. Started the vehicle and I let it run for 15 minutes. Um, as you could see, there was less than one minute left on the starter. So let it run for 15 minutes. And now we're going to go on our drive. Same drive we've done in the other two videos. If you haven't watched those other videos, make sure you watch them where we go over some different driving um, conditions that you might face. I'm trying to keep things uh, fairly consistent. So I've got the auto temperature on. So I'm just letting the vehicle do itself, do its thing. I've got the temp set to 73. So it's a, uh, you know, a temperature you very well uh, may use when you're out driving. Uh, my seat is hot. <laughs> it's, it's very hot. Um, steering wheel feels good. I've got the wheel heater on, the seat heater's on, the number three setting. We've talked about that in other videos too, where that, that seat heater does get warm. And in cold temperatures, if you can keep the seat warm and keep your body warm, you can often get away with keeping the cabin temperature quite a bit lower and, and thus likely saving energy, um, you know, to that end. Um, my, it's, it's warm. <laughs> my, try to keep this YouTube specific or YouTube safe rather. Um, it, it's, it's almost uncomfortably warm already. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that down to my standard, which is the number one setting. Um, that keeps my body feeling nice, but like right now it, it's, it's borderline uncomfortable. If you're somebody who likes a seat heater that's really warm, let me tell you, you will probably be impressed with this vehicle. Uh, my 07 Silverado has heated seats, which get pretty warm, not nearly as warm as these. My wife's Highlander doesn't even hold a candle to, uh, to this vehicle. This, this thing is something else when it comes to that. All right. So what we're gonna do again, just to recap, if you've seen the other videos, this is gonna make sense to you, right? We're going on our same drive. I'm gonna talk about what I'm experiencing on the way. We'll talk about some temperatures. I'm keeping my driving habits the same. I tried to get the temperature. I Trust me, I ordered up the temperature that uh, we've been trying to reach here. Um, I put this video off a couple days. I even uh, changed my schedule around just so I could shoot this video for you guys. So I, I hope you find this helpful. If you haven't done so already, just help me out. Hit that like button. Give me a subscribe. It does help out the channel. Keeps me motivated to make some more videos. Um, 
And uh, yeah, we'll keep going. One other thing real quick. Uh, I've got some, I'm gonna put some links to some EV products I have in the description. Those are affiliate links. If you click those, it's gonna bring you to Amazon. You'll see the products that I'm using uh, in the EV here. Uh, and it, I'll try to keep them specific to the video. Uh, if you click those links, it just, it just puts a little, uh, kind of a little tick mark, I guess, on my account. And if you make a purchase then within 24 hours, then I get a, a very small commission. It's like one or 2%. Your price is the same. It doesn't matter if you just go right to amazon.com and then look up the item like that flow charger. Um, your price is gonna be the exact same as if you click that link. The only difference is I get that small kickback. And I promise I will use that, any little small commissions I get, I'll use that towards growing the channel, get some better camera equipment, uh, a microphone, you know, I'd like to be able to shoot some video where the camera's outside the car, but obviously I get a, you know, need like a $300 wireless mic to be able to do that. So anyways, just a small plug on that. So as I'm driving here, guys, uh, the temperature up here, I'll, I'll take the camera off the mount here when we get to our stopping point, like always. Currently it's saying minus 24. Um, and that makes sense because the vehicle is sitting there although the pole building is not insulated it's basically just a metal structure with a roof um, you know now that it's moving it's probably getting a, a better sample of what the actual air temperature is again the vehicle's been parked outside for over 24 hours in the frigid temperatures the only difference is it was plugged in here's an interesting thing too i had the vehicle plugged in and you know it was charging i was i just checked on it last night the the charger plug the ovals were were all blue so i know it was fully charged i just happened to come out this morning before i turned the camera on um and before i had touched the ford app and i noticed that all those blue charging lights were off and i thought well that's weird i can see my charger has power what what's going on here well i think the vehicle might kind of go into like a sleep mode after it's been fully charged for so long what I did was I opened up the Ford Pass app. I it's it connected with the vehicle, and then actually those blue lights came on, and my air louvers in the front went through an open and close cycle. They closed, and then I could hear the vehicle kind of like you can hear the, for lack of a better term, the juices flowing. It's kind of a very interesting sound. Without an engine in the, a typical internal combustion engine in this vehicle, you can really hear the sounds. Um, and so there's probably the antifreeze is going through the pump. It's starting to work through that PTC heater. It's just, it's kind of unique. I, I don't know. It's just different because you don't hear that engine uh, making a lot of noise. So you can hear those things. Anyways, I knew it was alive. Um, so I hit the start button and I just let it go. As you, again, just to recap, I let it run for the full 15 minute start cycle. And then as you guys saw, unplugged, hopped in, and now we're going again so temperature minus 26 it's starting to feel cool in the cabin now um, when i was stopped talking to you guys at first the cabin actually i could feel some warmth i'm not feeling that anymore uh, it's it's getting cold i think i'm going to turn my seat heater up one we're going to go to that medium setting just because I want to keep myself a little bit more comfortable. I'm just starting to get a little bit of fog, a little bit of ice buildup on my driver's side window, probably from me talking, so I guess that's to be expected. What I will say is that in our previous, one of the previous videos, where the vehicle was just outside with no preconditioning, not plugged in, it definitely was colder at this point. So early reporting so far, as I'm sure you can imagine, having it plugged in and doing that 15 minute pre-charge has helped out significantly. But it's starting to get cold again. I'm just letting the system kind of do its thing. I know like, and there's been some great comments, you guys. I appreciate all of your comments that you put in. Remember, I look at those comments. I promise I'll look at them. Uh, I reply to as many as I can. And, and I at least, you know, take those to note. There's been some comments like, hey, use the max recirculating as well, right? Get, 
don't be pulling in all that outside cold air. Use the Max Recirc and that'll warm things up a bit. I hope to be able to do yet one more video and we'll, we'll explore that. Um, but I don't want to do that quite yet because I want to keep things consistent with the other two videos, okay? So just know that I, I get that. You're also, the problem with using the Max Recirc is you're more prone to fogging up and you can even see I'm starting to fog up right now. So I'm just gonna put it on Max AC and you're gonna hear, yeah, everything's ramping up, that's fine. Um, so I'm not using the Max Recirc, I'm just using Max Defrost. So all the air right now is just going to the windshield glass and it turned on the back glass heater. I'm gonna actually stop about a couple hundred feet short of where I usually do, just so we can try to stay in the shade here. Might make for some better video. Okay, um, so I'm gonna put you guys in park. Take the camera off for a second. Right on the dash, outside air temp low, plug vehicle in when not in use. Okay. So if we come over here, take a look at this. Sorry for the screen flashing there. Minus 26. That's chilly. All right, where are we at? So on this guy, we're at 41. So we're making progress, that's good. Now what I'm gonna do, like we've been doing, is I'm gonna put this guy back up here. We're gonna let that defrost air blow on that. And I can feel, this actually feels warm, definitely not hot but it's warm. Now, now that the window's starting to clear up, I'm gonna take this off of max, and as soon as you do that, the system goes back to what it was. So although this isn't lit up, it's still on its auto temperature. We're trying to get it to 73 degrees inside here. We're just letting it go. We're just gonna let it warm up, do its thing. Uh, the se secondary thermometer here says 45. Seat's definitely feeling warmer. Even just by moving it up that number one, I can feel that it's much warmer. Another thing I wanna look at is, let's take a look at where we're at here for energy consumption. Probably uh, to be expected, 25% of our energy has gone to climate. Makes sense. 53% to driving, 20% related to the exterior temperature. Uh, we're getting 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So a little bit under, if you look at my averages, I did a video on just sort of breaking the numbers down, crunching the numbers, what does it cost to drive an EV? What's my miles per gallon equivalent, the MPGE? So I talked about that. Um, we're a little under that, which again is to be expected in this extreme cold. Another thing, if we bring you over here, we talked about the bars here, sort of, if you can see the little bar right in the middle there, um, that's like where things would start from and then it goes this way and we definitely have some blocks going here That's not as many blocks though as it was when the vehicle was outside in the cold Not preconditioned so already we're getting some better um, Results from just simply having the vehicle being preconditioned and plugged in uh, As we're parked here we went up just a little bit 27% climate use if I come over, I'm, I'm feeling uh, a little bit warmer air again. If we go down to the floor here, I can feel the warmer air down here. And what's interesting too is I've talked about if you can keep this vehicle in a garage and you can keep the massive battery bank below, this has got the big, the extended range battery, the 98, uh, or no, 91 kilowatt hour battery pack. If you can keep that battery beneath your feet warm, I'm convinced that it does keep your feet warmer because that's such a big mass. Here's what's interesting though. Um, remember, this vehicle was parked outside, minus 26, has been outside for over 24 hours. All we did was the 15 minute precondition and I can feel that it's significantly warmer than it was without preconditioning and that can't be an anomaly it just it can't I don't know if that by having it plugged in if we're using a very small percentage of that battery power to keep the batteries I'm sorry by keeping it plugged in we're using a tiny bit of that grid power to keep the batteries slightly warmer when not 
when you don't have it started, right? When it's not in the precondition mode, it's just sitting there idle. I, I think that it must be because I don't know of any other way that the, the floor could feel like it does without that being the case. So there's another huge plug, no pun intended, for keeping yourself plugged in when not in use in extreme temperatures. You can see that our range is in fact significantly affected. Um, it's saying that we're gonna get about 156 miles on the trip with our battery being full. And I guarantee you that's specifically related to it being so cold. Because if we look, you know, minus 26, it's just, it's cold. And that is gonna significantly affect your range. The range estimates are quite conservative, so keep that in mind. We're probably gonna end up doing a lot better than that. Um, so for what that's worth. Let's take a look at our uh, thermometer up here. We're already at 50 degrees. So that's good. That means that's working. I can feel the warmth here. This guy down here in the middle is reading 46. And overall the cabin just, it, it feels okay. Uh, if I was going on a road trip, I definitely want to have a sweatshirt on for sure. But here's another thing where we've talked about this before. If I reach down here in the back, I don't know if you guys are picking that up at all, but I can feel at least some warmth coming out down here. It's not hot, but I can feel the warmth, which means, for, we use the road trip scenario again, like I talked about, kids are in the back, they don't have seat heaters, so can this ambient air keep them warm? And I'm gonna say yes, this, this would work for going on a road trip. Even with minus 26, we'll put the kids, give them a sweatshirt, Heck, you could even bring like a, a little car blanket with, but this will work. Doing the 15 minute precondition plugged in overnight, this would work. Um, again, to keep our testing real world, try to keep it as same as we have been doing. Uh, these results are repeatable. I do think that uh, if you have the ability to plug in, then that's great. We'll do a wrap up video on all of the possible the, or the three most likely out scenarios that you're going to face having an EV in extreme cold temperatures. I'll do that next, I promise. Don't We'll get that. So I'm going to compare all of those. What I would say, though, um, in the real world, if, if this was my scenario, what I would likely do is I would hit the extend button on the remote start because I use the remote start for instead of using that the scheduled start. Uh, but if I'm going on a trip, I'm gonna pro and it's this cold, I'm gonna let the vehicle run for probably more like 20, maybe even 25 minutes, and just really let it warm up. Um, you know, give the chance for the batteries to get warm. Make sure that PTC heater is as warm as it can while plugged into grid power. Okay, that way the cabin has that much less work to get warmed up using your batteries, and thus you're gonna extend that range out quite a bit that's really going to help. So uh, I think we can go ahead and close this one out. What I'm going to say is when I get back, I'll let you know what the total time is. So right now we've been in the vehicle 17 minutes, 35 seconds, 31% um, now to climate use is our energy use. We're still at minus 26. Um, if I, if I take a look back over here at our thermometer, we're at 55. So we're making progress. It does feel warm here. I think if I got out, got moving around, things would be good. Uh, I might be able to do one more video where if we really want to try to get this up quicker, um, we'll, we could try cycling. Instead of going into max, we can go into the uh, settings here and then we could use the max recirculating. We could try that. If that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments. But this is your scenario, guys. If you can't park in a heated garage, but you can plug in, do it all the time, 100%. Uh, this would work. I could make my short commute. I could make a road trip. If we're plugged in, it's going to make um, all that difference. So you can absolutely own an EV in winter climates as long as you have access to that power and you're able to precondition. Okay. Again, I'll talk about a comparison. We'll do that in the next video. If anything changes on my trip home, I'll let you know in the comments. Um, but please give me a like, subscribe. I appreciate you guys, appreciate your comments. We're starting to grow the channel a bit. If you'd like to see something for future videos, let me know, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.